Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you live. Welcome to our baby hats, mitts, and booties knit along. We will be using the LRA Cash Merino Aran Yarn and the Knitting Pure and Simple Pattern by Diane Susi. In this pattern, it has three different styles of hats, plus the mitts and booties, and three different sizes, newborn, three to six months, and 12 to 18 months. On our website at onebighappy.com, we have kits set up for you. Once you click on the kit, you can select the color of your choice. It comes with the yarn and the printed pattern. I'm so excited to knit this with you. Let's get to knitting. Let's cast on. Now, with this ribbed brim version of the hat, we want a stretchy cast on. And what I suggest for using it for a stretchy cast on is using two needles to do the cast on. This pattern doesn't give us a specific instruction for what type of cast on, so I'm gonna fall back to the long tail cast on. It is um, most common and it'll be easier to use. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out our yarn. We're gonna start with a slip knot. To make a slip knot, you make a loop, you fold it over, and you pull through. Just like that. We're using two needles. What this does is it makes sure that all of our stitches are consistently the same size and just a little bit bigger. A lot of times, beginning knitters, they cast on a little too tight and it makes the first row of knitting or round of knitting, in this case, really tight and fussy and they get frustrated. So by having a bigger stitch when you cast on, it just makes the first row of knitting so much easier. So when you, after you make your slip knot and you slide it onto your two needles, you wanna make sure that the tail is facing your body and the outside goes to your yarn ball. We're gonna put our fingers through the two in the center and we're gonna grab our tail and our working yarn and hold them with our ring finger and our pinky. And we're gonna pull back into a slingshot, mo slingshot motion like this. And we're gonna go under and under and through. Let me show that to you again. Pull back into the slingshot, go under. Now sometimes when you're using two needles, it'll go between the two needles. If you see that happening, just go ahead and take it off and start again. Make sure that your yarn is encompassing both needles, just like that. So we're gonna go under and under and through. Show you that again. So now I have five stitches on my needle. Let's do that one more time. Under and under and through. Okay, so because I'm doing magic loop, I wanna go ahead and cast on half of the amount of my total stitches. So this is 54, so half of that's gonna be 27. I'm gonna stop at the 27 point and put in a stitch marker. Let's go ahead, we've got five, six, seven, also too, to show you how much uh, tail that we need before we make our slip knot. It's about a yard, yard and a half for these stitches, but if you ever have any question on it, you can always wrap your yarn around your needles for the amount of stitches you plan on casting on, and that'll give you a great starting point to make your slip knot. Let's go ahead and get these casts on. And sometimes your tail will start kind of unwinding itself. It is okay to let it go and just let, let it wind back up on itself. It gives you a smoother look without making your yarn look all stretched out. 26, 27. Okay, now here I'm going to place a stitch marker. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cast on the next 27. and 27. There we go. Now we have 54 stitches cast on. 
to two needles using a 40 inch circular needle because we're going to do magic glue. So to set this up, to start knitting in the round, you want to hold on tightly <laughs> to one of your needles and then slide the other one out. It doesn't matter which one. One stays with the stitches on it and one comes out because they're, it, it's, they're both on, the needles are on both sides of your cord. Okay, we're gonna slide our work to the center of our cord. This is where the stitch marker comes in handy. This is our center point. We're going to bend our cord and pull our stitch marker. Now we have successfully divided our stitches in half. We want our working yarn on the back needle to start out. And we're going to get into the setup position for magic loop knitting in the round, which is all of our stitches are gonna be, the bottoms are all gonna be in the center, nice and even like that. Our stitches are gonna be at the tip of our needles, working yarn in the back. Now, a little trick that I like to do when I'm joining to start knitting in the round is I take the first stitch, which is held together with the slip knot that we made in the beginning, and I pop it off. And I take the last stitch that we cast on and I slide it to the first needle. And then I take the first stitch that's held together with the slip knot and I slide it to the back needle. So what I've done here is I have successfully made sure that my needles or that my stitches are in the round. They're connected, they're joined. They're holding tight to each other on both sides. Now I'm ready to pick up and knit. This pattern starts out with a rib, which is a knit one, purl one. So I'm gonna pull my back needle out and because my first stitch is a knit stitch, I'm gonna move my working yarn behind my needle. So it's gonna come back here like this. One other tip that I like to do is my tail. I like to put a slip knot in this. And I do this so that I don't accidentally grab the wrong yarn and start knitting with it because then you run out of yarn and, well, that's not fun. So we're putting our working yarn to the back of our work and we're gonna knit our first stitch. To do that, we take our needle, we slide it into the first stitch from left to right. See, look, I just grabbed my tail. That's why there's a slip knot there. Okay, grab my working yarn. I'm gonna wrap it around my ring finger and my index finger, wrap it around the needle Pull it down and around, so I'm using my index finger to guide the back side of it. Slide it and slip it off. I've now created one knit stitch. My next stitch is a purl stitch, so I'm gonna bring my yarn from the back to the front. This time, I'm gonna slip my needle in from right to left through the front loop, wrap the yarn around, pull it down, and then slide that one off the needle. And I'm gonna go back to my knit stitch by moving my yarn to the back of my needle, sliding it in, wrapping around, pulling down, sliding off. Now back to my purl stitch by bringing my yarn to the front, sliding in, wrapping around, and slide it off. I'm gonna continue going back and forth between the knit stitch and the purl stitch all the way to the end of this needle. I'm only focusing on the stitches that are right here on my needles. The other stitches are resting on the cord behind me, so I don't need to worry about those. They will have their turn when they come around, but that cord keeps them safe and out of the way and allows me to continue with just the ones that are on my needles. I'm almost to the end here. When you're knitting with Magic Loop, your tail side that's open right over here, this is your beginning of the round. If you're using double pointed needles or a fixed circular, 
you will want to put a stitch marker there to mark the beginning of your round. And even in this case too, um, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put that stitch marker there to mark that round so you don't get confused. I'm gonna get to the end of this needle and then go back and put my stitch marker there so I don't forget. Okay, so I have knit and purled all the stitches on this first needle. Now it's empty. I can go ahead and take this stitch marker off because this was just there to hold that middle point when I first started. I do wanna go ahead and get a locking stitch marker and go ahead and mark this side right here in the fabric. I'm just gonna pop it right in here so I know that that is the beginning of my round. Now to switch sides when you're using Magic Loop, you pull your needle back and then um, flip it over. So now I'm gonna be working on this side right here. I'm gonna be working on those stitches. These are the ones I just did. I flipped my work over. Now I'm gonna start here and go across. I ended with a knit stitch. See, that's a purl stitch that has a bump right there. That's purl, that's knit. So my next one is gonna be a purl. I'm gonna flip it over. I want my working yarn to be in the front because I'm doing a purl stitch. I pull my back needle out, slide in from right to left, wrap the yarn, and pull it through. Then my next is a knit stitch. I'm gonna continue with the knit one, purl one ribbing all the way to the end of this needle, and then I'll show you how to begin the next round. So I'm almost to the end of this row. I've got a purl. I'm gonna knit one, then I'm gonna purl. And knit. And my last stitch here is a purl. Okay, now we're going to go back into Magic Loop Setup. So to do that, I'm gonna flip my work and I'm gonna push this. You can push or pull, whichever's comfortable for you. Um, sometimes it just depends on which hand I have it in. But I'm pushing this needle back in. This is my Magic Loop Setup. So now that we have finished, Round one, we're going to hit our row counter. We have a one on there. And now we'll pull the back needle out. We slide in as if to knit. Make sure our yarn is between the two. Wrap and knit and then purl. And you'll continue on knitting and purling, creating this ribbed look right here. There's the knit stitch, there's the purl stitch. We've got this ribbed version here. You're gonna do this for six rounds. Once you've done that, meet me back here and we'll go ahead and finish up the body of the hat. Okay, now that we have finished our six rounds of ribbing where we have knit one and purl one, we are switching over to stockinette. And stockinette is just knitting every stitch. So I wanna make sure that my yarn is between my needles. I'm pulling my back needle out and I slide in to knit. And instead of purling this time, I'm just gonna go ahead and knit. This is the point where I'm just knitting every stitch. If I was knitting flat, then um, I would knit one row and then purl one row to get the stockinette stitch. But because I'm knitting in the round, all I have to do is knit every stitch because the right side of the work is facing me. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit a couple of rounds here for you. I'm coming up on the edge here. Notice that I'm slipping these stitches down this needle with kind of, with these fingers back here and I'm pushing these towards this needle on the back end here. It's not something that you see a lot um, when you're watching people knit, but you get a feel for that. It helps your work move, uh, your work move a little um, faster. Okay, so I'm at the end of this needle. 
not the end of the round. I've only finished half the round. I'm just at the end of this needle. I'm going to flip my work. I'm going to go back to starting position. And this time I am sliding this needle in. So we are in magic loop starting position. I'm going to pull my back needle out, slide into this first stitch, make sure that my yarn is right there. Now, when you're switching from one side to the other, you want to knit your first stitch at a normal, what's comfortable for you, tension. But your second stitch, you kind of want to, after you knit it, cinch it up a little bit. This is going to prevent you from getting gaps between where your cord is holding your stitches and your new needle. And I do that usually on the first and second, or I mean the second and third. We do that on the second and third. Do knit your first stitch, whatever's comfortable for you, and then cinch it up on the second and the third. And then continue knitting at a normal tension. Now once I get a few rows of these done, we'll have enough uh, fabric on our needles to go ahead and check our gauge as we go along. This is such a small project that um, you can do a gauge swatch and test it out if you want to see how your yarn is going to play um, in the washing and drying phase. Uh, but for this, it's such a small project, maybe we just want to go ahead and get some fabric on our needles and then gauge as we go. Again, I'm at the end of this needle. I'm going to flip my work. And this time, just feels comfortable, I'm going to go ahead and pull and then push. I'm back to beginning magic loop. I'm going to pull my back needle out, slide into knit, tension my yarn. I'm doing my first stitch as normal. My second stitch, I'm going to go ahead and tug a little bit to cinch up that tension. My third stitch, tug it up a little bit, and now just continue knitting. Okay, so I've got about three and a half inches knitted in stockinette. Now I'm going to go ahead and check my gauge, kind of that gauge check as you go here. I'm going to lay this down here. Okay, we want about 18 stitches for four inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So our gauge is good, but if you have too many stitches per inch, then you need to use a larger needle. If you have too few stitches per inch, then you know, need to use a smaller needle. Let's go ahead and show you how to do those decreases now. We're at three and a half inches, and now we need to start our decrease round. The first decrease that we're going to be doing is a knit two. Oh, I need to make sure I have my yarn in the right spot between my needle, back here, in the back. All right, now I'm ready. Okay, so we're going to knit two stitches. And then we're going to do a decrease that's called a K2 tog. And that means knit two together. And it's just what it says. You slide your needle through two of the stitches. So you come to the second stitch, and that's where you start to slide your needle in, and you get through both of those two stitches. Wrap your round and knit it like normal. There we go. Now, you knit two again. There's one, two, and now we're going to knit two together. Come to the second stitch, slide your needle through both of those, Wrap your yarn around, down, and through. We're going to continue this, knit two, there's one, two, and then knit two, tog, or knit two together, sliding our needle through those two stitches, wrapping around. Now there's a note in this pattern that says um, to knit two, knit two together, and then knit any remaining stitches. Basically because this is a pattern that is a size pattern, meaning that it's, uh, the pattern is written for several different sizes, they're giving you the same instructions for the decrease for all sizes. 
Some may end perfectly with the knit two, knit two together, and some you may have, um, after you knit two together, have two extra stitches left over. That's fine. Just go ahead and knit those and continue on. So here we go. We had one, knit two together. There's a knit one, knit two, knit two together, and one. And when you're knitting two together, that's basically taking two stitches and turning them into one. So I'm decreasing by one stitch when I knit the two together. Now I'm coming to the end of this needle. I've got a knit two, and now my next stitch is a knit two together, but I only have one stitch left on this needle. I'm not at the end of my round, I'm just at the end of this needle. So what I wanna do is incorporate this stitch that's left on this needle with this stitch that's over here on my cord. To do that, it's very simple. I just pull my needle straight through. It moves that stitch all the way, so now it's with its partner on the other side. Now what we'll do is pull our, cable ba our cord back, slide our needles back into working position. And here, this last one was my knit one, knit two. Now I need to do knit two together. And I've got that stitch with its partner on the other side. So I'm gonna pull this out, make sure my yarn is in the right spot. And I'm gonna knit these two together now. And continue with my knit one, knit two, and then knit two together right through there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this round of my knitting one and two. After this, I need to knit just three rounds of stockinette. These are called resting rounds. It um, gives you a little space in between your decreases so they don't all pile up next to each other. Follow your pattern for your following decreases and then meet me back here and I'll show you how to do the last decrease. Okay, I wanna show you the rolled brim version of this hat. As you can see, I've already knit up quite a bit. There's not much difference in between the two. You go ahead and cast on the amount of stitches for the size that you're making. I'm making the larger one on this one, which is the 12 to 18 months. It's just like the smaller one, except for we're not going to knit one stitch and purl one stitch. We're just gonna knit every stitch and continue knitting until our hat reaches the size that the pattern indicates. And then we'll go ahead and do the same decreases according to the pattern, follow those instructions. The important thing that I wanna show you the difference in this, because I'm making the larger hat, I chose to use the 16 inch fixed circular needle. There comes a point when this starts to happen. And I really wanna show you. See how my stitches look distorted? They're stretching. I've done some decreases, as you can see here and here, and now I don't have room. This doesn't look like magic loop. I don't have my loop on this side or my loop on that side. I was just knitting in the round just like this, and now my hat's distorted. I can do two different things. The option that I'm choosing here is to switch over to double-pointed needles. You could switch over to a magic loop if you wanted to, but I've already showed you how to do that, so now I wanna show you how to move on to double pointed needles to give your knitting some room to move. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this needle. I'm gonna let them rest. Look, they're happier already. Look at that, they've already. Okay, <laughs> pick up my double pointed needle. Um, the round that I'm on is a resting round, so we're just knitting every stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and go through here and just knit straight onto my double pointed needle. The best rule of thumb is to divide the number of stitches by how many needles you're gonna be placing on your work, not including your active needle that you'll be knitting with. So in this case, I'm choosing to use four total double pointed needles, which means three of them are gonna be in my stitches and one of them's gonna be working with the knitting the stitches. So for this, I'm going to take all of my stitches and divide them by three. It doesn't come out evenly, but that's okay. You wanna get as close to even as possible on all of your stitches and put those on the needles. So 
Now I've got like my first one third of my stitches on this needle. I'm gonna let that hang out here and I'm gonna grab another one. It's real simple. Now I'm just gonna start knitting onto this needle and I'm gonna let this one just hang out here. Because I have the yarn wrapped around there, when I grab this first stitch and hold it tight, it's gonna hold both of those. So then I'm gonna go ahead and just continue knitting onto my second needle. So on the second needle, I'm putting this roughly the second third of the amount of stitches onto the second needle. Now I'm going to grab the third needle and I'm going to put the final stitches on the third needle. And that should evenly disperse all of my stitches between these three needles. Okay, here we go. And again, just let those hang out. I'm going to knit into this one. When I first um, started knitting, nobody ever showed me that you could go from using circular needles to double pointed needles. And I remember how I was like, wait, what, what's happening to my needle? And I'm stretching and stretching and stretching all of my fabric, trying to get smaller and smaller. And then um, somebody showed me how to do this and I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I felt so silly. but. It just makes it happier when you switch it over to either double pointed needles or magic loop because the fixed circular needle for the size of the project that you're making by knitting in the round is slick. It's easy. It's fast. There's no messing with the cord like you do with magic loop. There's no messing with several needles as you go around. You can just knit and knit and knit. But then you got to figure out how to close up the top and that's where learning another style or another method comes in handy because then you can switch and add to your repertoire of methods that you know how to knit with. Play with them. Figure out what works best for you and then use that one. Okay, so we are now ready to do the final row of decreases, but I wanted to give you a visual of what those decreases look in the fabric. So here I have marked where, um, what it looks like. So we have, there's a row of knitting here, right here, and a row of knitting here, and then all of a sudden it just becomes one row of knitting up here. This is where you knit two together, that's what it looks like in your fabric when those two stitches come together. It's two rows of knitting coming together and now I have one stitch here. All right, the final row of decreasing. We are almost done with this cute, adorable hat. And this is a knit two tog all the way around. So that means we are gonna knit two stitches together all the way around. We do that, slide our needle through the two stitches, wrap, Oops, let's try that again. Wrap, knit, slide off. Do that again. And again. Then we're gonna flip over, get our needles into position, and knit two. We're gonna finish up on this needle, and then we get to cinch up the top and I'll show you how to do that. There's that one, that one. We are almost done. All right. So now I just have six stitches remaining. I'm gonna go ahead and clip my yarn, giving myself enough room to weave through these final stitches that are on my needles and weave in my ends. Okay, so I'm gonna take my bent tip needle and thread here. And now oh, I can go ahead and take my stitch marker out. And we're just going to slide this yarn right through all of our stitches. Right through there. We've got our ribbed brim here, three and a half inches, our decreases. All right, let's go ahead and weave this in so we can finish this up. When you 
cinch these up. There's a little star pattern right there. I usually just like to take my needle and go right through there. Now I'm on the wrong side of the work. I just flip the hat inside out. Now you can do a duplicate stitch and follow the bumps and pearls of the stitch before. But this is at the crown, the top of the hat. So within whatever way you prefer, we just want to secure this um, yarn so that it, the, your hat doesn't come undone. So you do want to get, you know, just weave it in and back and forth a few times. It will disappear if you're using the same color yarn throughout the whole hat, it just disappears right in here. So I'm going to slide that through back and forth a couple of times. Right there. There we go. Pulled apart. You really can't even see where I weaved in those stitches. Now I'm going to clip right up here. Turn it inside out. Here we go. Now this hat's ready for blocking. So now it's time to block this adorable little hat. As much as I love gauge swatching, which I really do because I like to test out my yarn to see how it's going to play and everything, I also love blocking. And the reason why I love blocking is because it evens out your stitches. It makes your knitting look so much more beautiful. So to start off with blocking, we're going to use some warm water with some wool wash in it. We soak. Our, gar our garment, in this case it's our baby hat. We're going to soak this. Usually you let this sit in the water for about 30 minutes. That allows all the air bubbles that are in the fibers to come out. But for now I'm just going to lay this in here, push it down, make sure it gets good and wet. You want the fibers to absorb the water. And what this does is it just relaxes them. You know, it's giving them a nice soak, a nice little bath. One thing you want to remember when you're blocking, do not wring out your fabric. That will distort your stitches and that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to do here. You want to gently grab and squeeze. Okay, so we're going to grab and squeeze to get all of this out as much as possible. At this point, and see if you can see how you're already seeing the stitches even out come together. And, it, and also too, when you have wool and it's wet like this, it almost feels like clay, like you can form it to however you want it. And then we're gonna roll it up in our towel. And the reason for the towel is because it's less friction on our little hat here and the towel will wick out some of the extra of the water and we can roll this up and then we can put pressure on the towel and we're not putting pressure directly on our little hat. So, you know, it's kind of a buffer but it also wicks out some of that extra water in there. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay. This is so soft. This is the part when all of a sudden your, your yarn just becomes so soft. Like it's soft anyway to begin with, but when it has this little bath, it for some reason, I don't know the chemical reaction behind it or whatever, but this is the part that it just becomes so soft. I think it's because your stitches are evened out because they got that nice little soak. So I have a balloon here. I've already blown it up. I've already measured it. The hat I'm making, the finished size says 12 inches. So I've already measured my balloon. It is 12 inches around. That's the circumference. So I'm going to slide that into my hat. That. And then I can go ahead and set it on this jar here. And then just let it dry overnight. The great thing about using a balloon is you're making different sizes of hats so you can blow the balloon up to match this, the finished size of the hat that you want. This one is 12 inches so I've gone ahead and blown my balloon up to 12 inches and that is the circumference. That's the whole outside of it and then um, it holds the shape, it mimics the shape of a baby's head and from there you just let it dry overnight. Isn't it so cute? Once your hat is dried, it's ready for its new little one. I hope you have enjoyed knitting these baby hats with me. It's so much fun. Remember, you can get a kit 
and the yarn at OneBigHappy.com. The kit comes with the yarn and a printed pattern. Join me next time and we'll go over the ear flat version of this hat from start to finish. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!